Hi everybody, it's Andrea over at SoSpire.com. Today I am here to show you how to sew this totally adorable wristlet clutch. This is great for going out on the town, grocery shopping. It is unique because it has this nice elasticized wristlet strap. So you can just push the stroller, the shopping cart. You don't have to worry, right, about losing your bag. It is fairly compact in size, but I did make it so it would be big enough to hold the phone and some small essentials like keys and lip gloss and such. You can make this totally from scraps and you can choose to have a snap closure, a button closure, or hook and loop tape closure. So shall we get started? Okay, we're going to begin by creating the front and the rear patchwork panels and there will be two of those and they are comprised of two strips of fabric which measure two and a half inches tall by ten inches wide and a strip of fabric which measures two inches tall by ten inches wide. So you're going to have six strips in total and I will put all of the measurements in the show notes so that you can access those all in one place. So begin by positioning a two and a half inch wide and a two inch wide strip, right sides together, and we're just going to stitch those using a very narrow two eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm just aligning that fabric right with the edge of the foot. And I did reverse stitch at the beginning and the end, and I want to show you how that joins together. I have here that I need to trim. Okay. I'm using really old fabric for this project so the ends had already frayed, but it is going to be lovely. Okay, so that joins together with a very narrow seam allowance and this skinnier strip that was two inches wide is going to be in the middle. So take the remaining two and a half inch wide and position that right sides together, lining that up. You're going to use the same seam allowance and attach that. each one on a piece of quilt batting that is the same size. I just want to smooth that out. And then you have um, two choices. You could do what's called stitching in the ditch and you stitch right on the seam line there, which means you probably will not be able to see your stitches or you could stitch an eighth of an inch on either side 
that is my preference. And this is just to add that quilted look to the exterior of the clutch. And that stitching really adds that depth to the piece. So I'm going to repeat the same thing for the other panel. assemble the exterior of the clutch so you're going to position both panels right sides facing and I want whatever um, fabric you want towards the top of your clutch position towards the top and you want to try and align these um, strips on the side so that they line up so that center piece is aligned. Put some pins in there to hold that. Alright, so I've got that center strip aligned on both sides. So towards the bottom, just come in there and create this little soft angle. Alright, and then what you can do is fold that over an angle on this side. It's just a little soft rounding of that corner that's going to give the clutch some um, interest. So now I'm going to stitch from the top, the top of the clutch all the way around the rounded corners and back up and I'm going to reinforce at the beginning and the end. to go all the way around the edge and just make sure that I've captured both layers of batting and both layers of fabric. This is really easy to fix now if you have a spot that looks a little close. Um, this clutch can be washed so you want to leave a little space for it, the fabric to fray on the interior. And everything looks Good. So now you can flip this right side out. And this is when you'll see how well you did aligning your corners or your little side strips. And I'm pretty happy with mine. Okay, so we're going to set this exterior aside and craft the interior which is comprised of two pieces of cotton fabric, fabric which measure five and a half inches tall by 10 inches wide. And because there's no batting, you can easily position those right sides together and fold them in half and then angle that little corner like we did for the exterior. You see I just have a slight angle there. I'm going to do the same thing, stitch down the side, around the angle, across the base, up the angle, to the top, reinforcing with the back stitch at the beginning and the end. Alright, I've stitched all the way around that and I can tell that I've captured both layers of fabric. If you wanted, you can turn that right side out and trim up any um, threads that you might see. Mine looks pretty good. So I actually need to turn that back around because this is the interior. And I want to fold that top edge over approximately a half an inch. And you could press it at the iron if you like, but I'm just going to use my hands to press that down. So I have that and it has the same shape as the exterior which I'm going to take and fold that top edge inward a half an inch and I would suggest just trimming off the excess about an inch down 
You could trim all the way around if you like. You really don't have to, but just that about an inch in so we can get rid of that extra little bulk there where the side seams are gonna align. And so fold that inward approximately a half an inch. And you can press it at the iron or if your fabric is cooperating, you should probably be able to press it with your hands. It's not that big of a piece. So you're gonna fit the interior inside of the exterior. Start by aligning the side seams. Just put a pin in that to hold it. And once I have those side seams aligned, then I come into the center and position a pin on either side in the center. So I'm going to set this aside and create the top flap, which is also patchwork styling. And I have two pieces of fabric, which measure five inches tall by four inches wide. And then a two inch strip that is two inches wide by five inches tall. And I want to attach those in the same fashion. So I'm just going to Position them right sides together using the very narrow two eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to head over to the iron and press everything nice and flat. measures approximately eight and a half inches wide by five inches tall when that's all attached and pressed then I'm going to take a like size piece of fabric five inches tall by eight and a half inches wide and one piece of quilt batting and this is going to become the interior of that so I'm going to position my patchwork panel atop of that right sides facing and then I'm going to do the same thing and just angle that bottom corner of this to give it a nice rounded shape. And now I need to stitch from the top around the corners and the base there around the corner and back up reinforcing. I'm going to leave this portion open. Super cute flap. Now I want to go ahead and stitch on either side of that center strip to give it that great quilted feel. But before I do that, I'm going to stitch all the way around the edge and then come in and stitch down either side. Now I've 
ditch the flap and I have all the details I want. I just have to get rid of these extra threads that I don't want. to decide which piece is going to be the front of your clutch and which piece is going to be the back of your clutch and that's just going to be a matter of personal preference. reach in there with your hands and you can adjust this after you pin it if needed but right now you just really want to capture all those layers before um, everything starts coming unfolded. Usually three pins is good here and what you're feeling for on the inside is that this interior layer is aligned with that exterior layer and you just feel across there. And you want to make sure you have the same amount of flap tucked in there on both sides. you to set that aside so we can create the um, elasticized wristlet strap. So this is crafted from a piece of fabric which measures 3 inches wide by 16 inches tall and you're just going to fold that in half long ways and stitch down the right hand open side to create a tube. safety pin. You just hook that through one piece of that end like that and then start feeding it back on top of itself. And you just kind of pull the fabric over it and the safety pin is then leading the rest of the fabric out through the other end of the tube. you get to the safety pin if you pull that out the fabric will turn right side out so then unhook your safety pin and this right now is a really long wristlet strap which kind of get that flat it doesn't need to be pressed because we're going to thread a 10 10 inch so it's a half an inch wide and 10 inches long piece of ribbed elastic through this um, tube that we just created. Now you're going to use the safety pin to thread that through creating this bunching. It's kind of like a hair, um, what do they call those, squinchies, scrunchies. <laughs> So when you get to the end, just go ahead to the end of the elastic and stitch that in place now so it doesn't get away from you. And then find your safety. 
safety pin in there and keep threading that through. So once you get the elastic at that end, you want to go ahead and stitch that down to the other end. And definitely use a back stitch. You can remove the safety pin and now you have this scrunchy wrist strap, which is so fun. So join both of the raw ends together and stitch those in place. So it has like five, six rows of stitching in it. So now the actual construction of the clutch is complete. We just have to decide on what type of closure we want. At this point, you could attach hook and loop tape and have a like Velcro type closure, which would be very secure. You could install a snap which is what I'm going to do. Or you could also put a buttonhole in right here and then sew on a button. That would be adorable. Like I said, I um, like the snap closures. So I want to decide where to position my snap and I just want a pinch of that green showing. So I have a snap set here, and I install my snaps with a hammer and a cutting board. So I want to position the top of the snap at the center of my little polka dot panel there. <laughs> portion of the snap with the hole goes on top of that and I just poke down that poke those prongs through the fabric and you'll know it's resting on there good because it won't wiggle and then I just take my hammer and give that a good whack I do that in my lap though Take the 
other portion of the snap and position that in there. And then you have one more portion with the prongs, which is going to need to go from the inside of the clutch up. So you want to know exactly where to position that. So the easiest way to do that is going to be to make little um, marks with those prongs in the exterior of the fabric and then you can come up from the underside and poke those prongs up in almost the right position. position the top of that snap on there. It should be steady and then just give it a good whack with your hand. sewing with me today. This was a fun project. I'm going to keep this one. I love it. I love creating the patchwork designs. This uses such a tiny amount of fabric and it comes together so quick, but it's totally unique, right? So I wanted to give you the finished measurements on this. When everything is together, it's approximately nine inches wide by five inches tall. It is going to be the perfect size for my phone, my keys, lipstick, and uh, whatever else tiny I need to throw in there and head out. So I'll be back next week with another inspired sewing project. Until then, the creative genius in me salutes the creative genius in you.